Markley Show. And now your host, Nathan Markley. Live from Bristol, Rhode Island, it's W the Nathan Markley Show, WQLI 88.3 FM. Hello everyone, I'm Nathan Markley, your host for this next two hours. And what I like to do is do a little introduction um, for those of you who just tuning in and don't know what the Nathan Markley Show is. So the Nathan Markley Show is, um, well, just so that I'm able to put on WQLI 88.3 FM, Roger Williams Student Radio here in Bristol, Rhode Island. And what I like to talk about is technology because I'm a big tech geek and I love reviewing products. I love talk about tech news and just everything anything with a chip in it pretty much if it's a phone if it's a car if it's a computer desktop radio um what else what else have a chip your watch if it's your toothbrush i guess there's smart toothbrushes now that connect to the internet so i guess the internet of things iot devices and all the stuff like that you know <clears throat> and i i have um a bunch of technology news for you this week because a lot has happened and a lot of new stuff and a lot of stuff that I'm excited for. Now, to uh, listen to the Nathan Marcus show after the fact if say that you can't listen to it from 2 to 4 p.m. So you want to say, what did Nathan talk about during the show Sundays? You can go to NathanMarcusShow.com and listen to that. Uh, which is pretty cool. I, I, uh, I, uh, I allow you, I record the show and allow you guys to listen to it after the fact. And all the links I talk about during the show will be uh, in the show notes too, which is awesome. Uh, you can tweet me at Markley Show during the show if you have any questions or have a discussion. Or <clears throat> what I will sometimes do is open up the phone lines and have you guys call in. But I'm not sure if I'm going to do that today. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, for today's show of the Nathan Marcus show, number one hour, hour one, I want to talk about technology. And then hour two, I have a bunch of music I want to play for you guys. Uh, if you follow me on Facebook and Twitter, I ask you guys what kind of music you would like to listen to and most of you some of you came back and gave me some songs and i want to play that for you so yeah and those links will be on the nathanmarkster.com website if you uh want to go check it out so all right let's uh get right to the first tech story today <clears throat> excuse me uh nintendo Everyone knows Nintendo, right? Nintendo uh, announced this week a new gaming system called Nintendo Switch. And it's pretty awesome. Uh, It looks like... How how can I explain what this looks like? It looks like a tablet. It really is a tablet with game controllers. It looks like um, the Wii U. For those of you who don't know what Wii U is, they kind of made a... The Wii is another game console extension to the Wii. And they just... Um, it's like a second screen. So the Nintendo Switch, it's a tablet. Or a game console, it looks like a tablet. I'm going to call it a tablet from now on. With controllers that you have, you can attach to the side. And it's detachable to come and take it apart. The reason they made the controllers that look kind of look like the Wii controllers, the rectangle shape. And the reason they made it detachable is because uh, you can dock the switch into a docking station connected to your TV or a big screen monitor or something like that. So you can play on the big screen. But say you have to go, you know, you're in the airport or you're in the car ride or maybe take your dog for a walk in the park. You could take the switch with you and all you have to do is just put the controllers back on to the tablet looking thing and 
undock it and play like a regular game, handheld game, control console. And the whole point of the Switch is because you can switch between different locations to play it wherever you are, you know. It's, it's pretty cool. I, I like it. And this is going to come out in March of 2017, if the site is correct. So I'll leave a link on that before. Okay. If you listen last week, last week I talked about cybersecurity because October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And I talked about how to protect yourself against threats and keep yourself safe on the internet. Well, this past Friday, for Friday morning, the internet was under attack. Uh, It was called, so one of the attacks is called DDoS attack, which is a denial of service attack. And this denial of service attack was just pretty much like a malware. And I'll I'll, I'll talk about in a second how that happened. It shut down major websites across the website, the internet. Uh, For instance, it shut down Spotify, Amazon, uh, the the New York Times, too, Um, Netflix, all the major sites, Twitter. And what kind of happened was that it happened Friday morning, and by afternoon, uh, it kind of spread out to the uh, west of the whole country, so starting in the east, and then by afternoon, it started growing. And what had happened this uh, malware, this person created a code, and it told devices to go to this one um, DNS domain server company, DNS service company, where people register for domain names like Spotify, Twitter.com, uh, Netflix.com, stuff like that, even the NathanMarkinson.com. I don't use this domain server, so we're lucky that it didn't take down. But it's called uh, DYN DNS. So um, what had happened was... <laughs> This attack went there and told these devices all at once to go pretty much knock on that door and say hello like a million times. And of course, the service has to respond. But because so many happened, at, like a billion devices went at once, and the service got overloaded and uh, shut down the, the, the websites. You know, had to set the service shut down, crashed. So making it across every web this, the websites that they host. Uh, the VOD states starting eleven ten UTC on October twenty first, February of uh, Friday twenty sixteen. Wow. We began monitoring and migrating the DDoS attack against our DYN managed DNS infrastructure. Some customers may experience increased DNS query latency and delayed zone Propagation during this time, meaning um, it would take a while for the website to load because well, the servers got overloaded. Let's see. Several websites that was also shut down, the board says, was Airbnb, Tumblr, Reddit, and like I said, the New York Times. And there was an outers map that it showed. It was a level 3 outers ma- map. And it was looking pretty interesting to see. And how uh, this is big. And I think this is the start, just the beginning of something too. Because what this uh, attacker did, it, he released the code, so now anyone can grab that code. I think it put it on a WikiLeaks and do it themselves. And what happened was he, the, the devices that they got in, the code is kind of a malware, or it is malware. And it affected devices like printers, phones, maybe like your dishwasher or your washing machine or your refrigerator, anything that's connected to the internet, IoT devices, Internet of Things. And that's what I think because more and more of these devices, IoT of Things devices come online, and I see 
make it get affected. So you want to make sure be aware of that and password protect it and uh, be secure. You know, I mean, it's good to use this stuff. It helps us, you know, with productivity. But with security, if you have high security, the convenience is not going to be a, be there. Like what I like to tell people is, you can't have convenience and high security at the same time. So if you want privacy. Right, so your security is high, your privacy, the convenience of stuff is gonna be low. But if you want more convenience, the privacy and the security of stuff is gonna start dropping. There's no really way right now to level that off. And as I've been saying, as more and more of the devices are on us, this code is released, I think this is the start of something. And yeah, just watch out, you know, be careful with emails you. Uh, get yeah, if you don't recognize the email address and it seems suspicious, it's probably is suspicious. Don't report it as spam to be your email server, uh, host whatever you use. If you use AOL or Gmail or Yahoo or Microsoft Office 365, hit the spam button so that their spam folder can block it and warn other users that get it. And uh, just be careful, you know. This, this is uh, it was pretty interesting to see that all these devices went down at once. So, yeah. Moving on, AT and T is buying Time Warner for eighty five point five billion dollars in cash and stocks. Wow. Uh, this was confirmed about eighteen hours ago, and TechCrunch has been monitoring the story because a few days ago ATT was looking about Time Time Warner, which is a cable company. And as many of you know, ATT has Dish Network. So they already have a cable company. So for ATT to have this now, uh would give them a bigger up in the me this media communications world where they've been and have more networks with HBO, CNN and one Warner Brothers Studio, so like I, it gives them a leg up. It's what's on their own video content business. And let's see, TechCrunch says the price of the final acquisition will be 107.50 cents per share. So 107 dollars and 50 cents per share, paid in half cash and half AT&T stock. This means that. For each outstanding share of Time Warner stock, investors will receive $53.75 in cash and $53.75 in AT&T stock. Wow, I should have invested in Time Warner. This plus gives Time Warner a valuation of 85.85.4 billion dollars. After the deal is finalized, Time Warner shareholders will own between 14.4% and 15.7% of all outstanding AT&T shares. Time Warner will represent about 15% of the co combined company's revenues after the deal closes. Wow, that's a lot of money. AT&T will be financing the cost portion of this transaction about $42.7 billion with new debt as well as cash already on the company's balance sheet. Wow. That's amazing. Why would they do that? In terms of combined shareholder benefits, at and said the deal should result in $1 billion worth of annual costs within three years of the deal closing. Hmm. This deal harkens back to a very old Trump in the tech media telecoms world, says TechCrunch. Carriers have long worried about becoming dump pipes and the counteract that lead to develop interesting plays. Hmm. Uh, yeah, this having AT&T get in Time Warner, I think it would be a leg up, like I said, on their own video and stuff, and... AT&T must have something planned if they're grabbing all this media companies. As you know, Verizon acquired AOL for $4.4 billion in June of 2015. And AOL, I didn't know this. I actually learned about this yesterday. AOL and Time Warner 
combined to form a single company, which was the worst merger in corporate history, apparently. So they split. So yeah. Uh, I guess between Verizon and AT&T, they were trying to uh, acquire as many video service providers. So AT&T has Direct TV and Charter Communications, and now soon to be Time Warner. Uh, this is the they get grow the footprint of content delivery business. It says. I wonder if they get combine the two. Can Direct TV and Time Warner have both? <laughs> be interesting. Uh, there is a downside, according to Senator Al Franken, which issues a statement how it may end up being bad for consumers. And the senator says, AT&T reported a proposal to acquire Time Warner for more than $80 billion, raises some immediate flags about colonization in the media market, which is an area I've worked to address for years, said Senator Frank. And I'm skeptical, I'm skeptical, of huge media mergers because they can lead to higher costs, fewer changes, and even worse service for consumers. Oh, even worse customer service for consumers. I think what to say. And regulations often agree that when Comcast unsuccessfully tried to buy Time Warner Cable, a deal that he opposed, in the coming days, he's going. the Senator is going to be pressing for further details about this reported deal and how it would affect the American consumer who deserves access to the content they want and whose pocketbook continues to be squeezed by raising cable and internet costs. Yeah, I can uh, I can see that, yeah. It, it could, uh, at t could raise the prices on Time Warner and all this stuff, even Verizon. But, I don't know. It's, uh... It's a monopoly they're trying to do, which is probably illegal in the United States. You can't have a monopoly, but there's ways around it, as we know. Uh, both of these companies will be holding a joint call on 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time on Monday morning to discuss the transaction. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I'm going to do something I haven't done before. I am going to open up the phone lines and I'm going to have a discussion about these topics I'm talking about. And that phone number is 401-254-3800. Again, that phone number is 401-254-3800. So give me a call. And if you want to comment or have something you want to discuss about the topics I'm talking about, feel free. We'll have a discussion. All right, I'm going to move on to my next event. Oh, event, yeah. The next topic, which actually is an event. Apple is having an event October 27th, and hints new Macs are coming, which I'm so excited for. I can't wait for this event to happen. So, uh, as you know, Apple had an event in September to release the iPhone 7, uh, which is an okay device, but I'm not an iPhone user anymore, I'm using Android. But this uh, new event, because we are due for, Mac is due for upgrading Apple, so I said we, because it's a tech community. So, Mac's going to announce, well, the rumor mill is that they're going to announce new Macs, and but the invitation looks like uh, it's an Apple symbol, and it says hello again. Back when uh, Steve Jobs released the first uh, Apple Market Task in 1984, the ad said hello. So that gives it the, what, what people think it's going to be Max. And one of the Max that I'm excited for is the MacBook Pro because it's going to have something that, that Mac never did before. It's going to have an OLED mini screen. Could, and that could be called the Magic Toolbar. And what this mini screen is supposed to do is it be touch screen and it also show different um, different stuff. So like uh, your function keys and maybe your battery or Wi-Fi. Uh, what else it says? It can show 
of different apps that um developers for different apps with whatever app you're using on the computer you know and that it's pretty cool the all that screen and also they say that it's gonna have a touch sensor id or touch id sensor as they say and usb type c ports so i guess you can unlock your mac with your fingerprint reader like the iphone so that's pretty cool and then i think apple plans to use this name smart button in the upcoming macbook Pro. so i'm going to be uh doing more research on this and keeping my eye out on this new macbook pro because i'm interested in it and i'm looking again macbook actually i am going to get this macbook pro whenever they release it if they release it if it's just true and the moment mill has been really really good about um getting to getting us stuff about what exactly apple's going to release so yeah and, and the, the new macbook pro is going to be thinner because as you know an older macbooks the usb and mega safe ports are like bottom neck bottom neck as you say when it comes to thickness and so switching it to usb type c ports usb type c ports will make it a lot thinner and I hope they should put more than one US, USB type C ports because you have more devices and um, that will be silly not to have only one type C port. We'll see. I'll keep you guys updated and I'll let you know if I get it, the MacBook, and I will do a review on it. Oh, look at this. It's going to have the latest Intel Skylight processor. For better performance of battery life, so that's pretty good. To have the better Intel, I am very excited for this. I can't wait. And uh, you can actually watch the Apple event at on the 27th of October on Apple.com. They're going to stream it. Says Tech Ones, and that starts at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So that's what 1 p.m. Eastern time. So, you'd be sure they do, uh, listen to that. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, switch the Mac, I think. I'm tired of Windows. And also, I have a Dell XPS 13 in. The touch pad already went, and the speakers are going. Do not get the Dell XPS 13, guys. Uh, I, when I first got it, I liked it, but now, after using it for a year and a half, it's not worth it. Um, it's a nice, it really is. It's an okay computer. It has an i5 processor, the webcam. I like the display, but the hardware is not not good. I feel like Dell seems to have cheap hardware when it comes to consumer grade laptops or computers, but when it comes to business computers, they seem to have better hardware on there, which is very interesting. Yeah. Well, uh. Let's get back to TV, shall we? Dish DVR. As you know, this you know what a DVR is. A DVR is you're able to record your TV shows. But this is gonna allow you now to have what YouTube on a cable TV. So YouTube is coming to this, which is also joining Netflix and other on demand services on Dish Hopper 3 DVR. Which is awesome. And this means that you'll be able to watch YouTube on channel 371 on this and also on the standalone app because now people are creating apps for this. And uh, you'll be able to send videos to your DVR via the YouTube mobile app on your phone or your computer and watch it on the TV. And this is something I want to bring up because. <laughs> As I'm noticing more and more, YouTube and Netflix and what else? Vimeo, Pandora, the Weather Channel, all these apps, all these networks, I'm realizing the internet is a powerful thing and a lot of people like streaming and watching their content on the internet because everyone's always connected to the internet. And as we had discussed last week, when everything is connected, everyone is vulnerable. 
So you can go back and listen to that episode of Nathan Mark. So last from last week, if you want to learn more about what I said. But yeah, this is pretty cool to see that YouTube is now on like the cable network. Uh, I still think cable TV is dying out because of the internet. I say internet killed television. But yeah, this might be the start of something new. And I like seeing YouTube and Netflix and there's others that you can just get on the internet coming to devices that uh, be able to watch without connecting to the internet. I'm guessing the DVR would have to connect to the internet because they have a standalone app. So, yeah. And as you know, YouTube uh, has YouTube Red, which is um, a paid version of YouTube. It's $9.99 a month. And you can get YouTube original movies from other YouTube creators that make uh, content. So they made like, special YouTube videos and movies just for YouTube Red. And also when you have YouTube Red, there's no ads. And so you just watch it so you don't have to worry about ads popping up. And the money that you pay for YouTube Red actually goes to YouTube and the, the creator that you watch the YouTube. So if you watch a particular YouTuber or some of that makes videos on YouTube and you have YouTube Red uh, in the analytics and the ad sets that YouTube has, they distribute the YouTube Red money to all these portions. It's just not a lot, but that's pretty cool. And YouTube loves to keep folks glued on the TV where presumable that uh, the really eventually get tried the funniest dash cam videos or took over the scene and yeah that's true. I'm just reading the tech cards out ago. And all this stuff will be uh linked to um in the show notes of the Nathan And you're listening to the Nathan Markley show on eighty eight point three WQOI Roger Williams Radio and we'll be back in uh, a few minutes. Nathan Marcus so live from WQOI 88.3 FM. I'm Nathan Markley. I'm your host today. And uh, if you're just tuning in, I was talking to you guys about uh, Nintendo new game console, AT&T by Time Warner for $85.5 billion in cash and shares. The Apple event on October 27th. But they're going to release new Macs, the MacBook Pro, which I'm very, very excited for. And I can't wait to release, release it so I can buy it. I can finally buy my MacBook. I've been waiting for for years to get. And, uh, yeah. And also, YouTube now available on this DVR. Automatic. I'll get to that in a second, what automatic is. And, of course, I announced that the Internet was under attack on Friday from a DDoS attack. And uh, denial of service attack, which is very, uh, it was scary for many people, but yeah. Uh, I mentioned a few minutes ago, Automatic. And Automatic is a, how can I explain it? Okay, Automatic is a device that you plug into your car via the OBD2 port where it can monitor your car's computer. And they came out with a few years ago, but Automatic is releasing a new version of the device called Automatic Light, which delivers more affordable connected car devices through Bluetooth connectivity. So you have to download the app for iOS or Android on your phone, you plug in the Automatic into the port of the car, and I have it for a few years now, and what you can get is it monitors like it knows when your car turns on and when you're going 
So it tells you where you go and where you started from and where you ended. If you break hard, it gives you a lot, like a tone. If you go over like 70 miles per hour, it tells you how, many, how long you've been going over that. And it also tells you the, the, the little device in the car will beep at you. And if you uh, accelerate too hard. Also, it will tell you if your car is able to do it, you can... Uh, monitor your gas mileage and tell you if you have to fill up and all that stuff and it gives you like a score every day in the third of the week and of course it kind of like you want to get the score like above a hunt or whatever and it's pretty good uh right now like i'm looking at my dashboard and because this is a new week so far i drove about 22 miles so far and according to this it's three dollars and one cent and then just 22 miles. Wow. And it, I've been on the road for 44 minutes. And also when you stop, uh, it gives a Google map and, and the device and it you can show, shows you where your car is parked. And if your check engine light comes on, it monitors that. It detects it. And you can see what the code is. Sometimes it give you a description or you can hit search for the web for more info. You can hit nearby mechanics. It gives you a list of nearby mechanics. So you can call them and have them fix the car if you don't have a mechanic yourself. Or you can clear the light. And if you clear the light, um, let's say you know about the check engine light and you just clear it after you fix the problem, you start to clear the light and mechanics will tell you that and usually they do that for you. But in the app, you can automatically be able to do that. And if the light comes back on, then you know that it's a problem and you have to contact your mechanic. You should contact your mechanic and either way, the check engine light comes on. The other thing I like about automatic is it gives you a crash a lot. So when that's turned on, it, the automatic will detect if you're in a cat or in a crash. It has to be very serious. Like the airbags are... Uh, uh, deploy or something like that and they will contact you and if they can't get a hold of you you can set emergency contacts you can set up to three emergency contacts and they'll go down the list and their um call center will contact them and also their call center will be able to contact uh emergency personnel if you need it if you go to the class so that's pretty interesting so this new automatic automatic device that they're coming out with called Automatic Light is going to be $79.95 and you'll be able to buy it at Best Buy, Amazon, or Automatic's own site. The Light carries no subscription, unlike the Automatic 12. Oh yeah, because they uh, came out with Automatic 12, which is a th has a 3G enabled um, device, so you can connect it connects to the internet automatically. And it gives you a little more futures with that. Uh, I don't have that one. I have the original one. I might get the automatic light eventually to try it. I might actually do that. I love re reviewing products. Uh, and let's see, because it's updated for us too. It's been a few years since I have automatic. I'm um, just reading what TechCon says. Uh, yeah, like I said, it says it tells you should appear on your dash. We check engine light. Helps locate mechanics. Uh, oh, also the new thing it locates filling stations, or gas stations. So it helps uh, it, it locate gas stations for you too if you need to get a gas station and tracking gas costs. And it connects to other apps too. Like say you have a kid who's learning how to drive, you can get this device and you can set up called an app through Automatic License Plus, and you can coach them through driving, and it will show you in the database, it will show you uh, how they're driving, you know, if they brake too hard, if they um, uh, sped up, or, you know, just, just different stuff, they'll help you mile into it, and they show you a map where you car, where they are and stuff, so it's pretty cool. I guess they'll send you lots. So this automatic light, let me read what they uh, 
TechCrunch has in the tech article. It says, Automatic clearly wants to cover the spread here with a range that targets both price-sensitive and convenience-seeking customers. The gap of $50 still seems a little narrow to me, TechCrunch, but they are obviously looking to optimize the pricing, pricing on the low end. Cost of entry of this kind of aftermarket add-on is a key sticking point. Since many drivers probably aren't feeling anything necessarily missing without these features, so any price savings is likely to track a fair number of potential new users. So yeah, and I'm looking at the new, there's a new app for it too. I guess I have to download the new automatic app. Uh, the automatic pro is $129.95. And that, like I said, it's connected to 3G and mobile. It gives you uh, more features. Let me see if I can uh, pull up the website and actually tell you what the difference is. Uh, oh, so it has unlimited 3G subscription for five years, which is not bad. I guess you have to, after five years, have to pay for it. And you have the class a lot. So it it would detect a crash for you, and um, it, the call center agent will call you. Like I said before, uh, what else? You can keep track of your car. Oh, I guess um, in here has real time location because with the three G stuff, it's just pretty cool. The app I have now, you can do that. Uh, add an app for every driver. Yep. You can, like I say, you can connect to other apps. So, like, if you come home, Automatic would tell, like, an app, like, if this, then that, to turn on your lights. If you have Philips Hue lights or you have the Nest thermostat. So, when you leave your house, it would set your thermostat down. Or when you come home, it would turn up your thermostat. So, this is pretty cool. So, you don't have to do it automatically. You have to do it manually, just automatic for you. It was like sending messages and stuff. Check engine light. Uh, it's both for iPhone and Android. And you have a web dashboard. Um, oh, look at this. Alright. So I guess the automatic light, it doesn't have class law. According to the website, that's interesting. Why would they take that out? Oh, I know what this. If it doesn't detect crash lots, why would you get it? I mean, even my original has crash lots. You have to get automatic pro. Because what automatic light does is trip login. Business tagging, because you can separate business expenses and tra- tagging and stuff. Engine light diagnostics, full up login gas station, or when you fill up. iPhone Android apps, web dashboard, Bluetooth syncing. It doesn't do any of the class of law or parking, tracking, live vehicle tracking, event based apps, or streaming apps. The light bulbs and automatic. Well, that's not good. Worth it. Okay, I take that back. Don't get automatic light. Uh, unless you want, don't really want the class a lot. Uh, if you want the class a lot, that. Okay. I guess if you would want to just keep track of your logs and um, the basic stuff, get it. But get the automatic pro in that case. The only difference is you have unlimited 3G syncing. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to. Okay, I'm not getting that now. I, why would I take that out? That doesn't make sense. Okay, automatic. Guess I guess they want all people to buy automatic pro. Hmm. I mean, the car is a computer, so. But yeah, uh, you have to have certain model computer cars. Pretty much, um, anything that has a OB OBD two port. Uh, or ODP to put whatever that port. I think it's 96 cars and up will have it. Anything at before 96 won't have. 
have in and walks in gasoline and high border diesel vehicles made in the US. Um, uh, I guess if you have a that's a cause it won't work so you can't use that a Tesla but Tesla has their own stuff you can uh, go into the automatic site and check and to see what uh, car makes your car work so let's see I want to go to give me a car give me a 2015 Toyota and I want a Toyota Tundra. Oh, submodel. Uh, Toyota Tundra Platinum. Mm, yeah, Platinum gasoline. It's supported. What about TD? Yep. Yeah. So let's see if um, a car that is not supported. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to set to 96 because... Alright, so yeah, anything before 96 does not um, support. But I mean, I like automatic. Automatic's pretty cool. I, I use it. I just re had to reconnect it because I had disconnected. And uh, I'm glad I reconnected it. Yeah. Uh, Tesla, uh, Elon Musk is going to, I think, have a new... Their... Um, event was supposed to be last week but it's gonna be this Wednesday according to this oh here's another thing all Tesla cars built from today and on will have all hardware needed for full self-driving so oh he did review reveal model 3 of March yeah yeah okay so any car any Tesla that made before today or a couple of days ago, will not get this hardware. But I guess they're not going to release. The, the cars are going to have the hardware in it for full self driving, and over time they're going to um, eventually release updates so it would do um, full driving eventually. I guess they want to make sure. But since the hardware um, is, they have the hardware, why did they got to put it in? So let's see, the hardware required to make this possible includes essential loadout complete with eight surrounded optical cameras, which can be seen up to 250 meters out from the vehicle on all sides, and a dozen ultrasonic sensors to assist the system. These capable of twice the range of the previous hardware and can detect both hard and soft objects according to the company and we need tech ones i will also leave this link in the show notes as well what else what else can the hardware it is um also included is a radar hardware that provides forward facing detection of hazards even through potential uh our folks in Conditions, fusion conditions, whatever. So I guess it's uh, if it's not really. Oh, okay, I get it. It makes snow and stuff. The biggest change might be the new onboard computer that provides over 40 times the processing power of the existing Tesla hardware, which actually wants the in-house neutral net of the car maker as developed in order to handle processing of inbound data from the version from the vision sonar and radar systems musk said on a call discussing the most recent update of the existing driver assistance autopilot software which is not really autopilot like, um how did the guy say it i was watching a review on it this is an autopilot it's kind of like adaptive cruise control because it, it still wants to keep your hands out of the wheel. It actually talk, like, beeps at you, like, talks to you, to you, like, kind of like flashes and beeps. Because if your hands are off the wheel too long, it wants to keep your hands on the wheel. So, the, let's see, the autopilot software that's basically stretched computing power to the limit, which is why the upgraded CPU is required for full level 5 or nominee. The new GPU is the Titan Nivea Titan, much said on the call, though it was a 
tight call between uh, AMD and Titan. So yeah, um, <sighs> it's pretty interesting. Self-driving system will operate in the background in shadow mode, incessantly walking virtually behind the scenes in order to demonstrate where it wouldn't would have been able to avoid accidents that a person driving could not. Yeah, the only part that's that a little bit now. Uh, yeah. Uh, we'll increase the amount of three, and it will be a 8,000 add-on for vehicles to enable the software. Huh. The reason for the phone I can't be able to cost a lot of recording monsters. Yeah, so it says the reason for this is to increase driving safety and reduce traffic related accidents. Musk spoke personally about this aim going so far to embrace broad media coverage of autopilot related accidents. While the ongoing and present issue of human fault car deaths receive the less attention from press. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a uh, pretty for those of you who do not know what um the Tesla is. The Tesla is an electric car, fully electric, has a lithium ion battery batteries underneath the car. It's pretty cool. Uh I can't wait to get one. I want the uh the model three that comes out in two thousand eighteen, right? Yeah. Yeah, two thousand eighteen. So it's supposed to be a lower end uh car. Than a Tesla Model X or the S, and <laughs> that's cool. Tesla's solo city share host to vote on proposed merger, merger November seventeenth. Yeah, Tesla wants to own fully own that company, which is I think it's worth it. But I mean, it, it uses electricity, so power, so it just uses gasoline, and I kind of like the idea of waking up to a full tank of gas every day, pretty much. <laughs> Cause you plug it in when you come home, and it, like I said, it, it kind of uh, um, detects where you are in your nose, and I think eventually we'll see a full auto pilot, full self-driving. But right now, it's a lot of stuff we have to work on. And like I said, the autopilot's not like full, like autopilot, like a full self-driving. Still have to keep an eye on it. And, and apparently, it doesn't detect when the green or red lights are. So if it turns the red light, you have to stop it automatically. Yeah. But, you know, that's one of the things. All this technology, all this great technology coming out. Uh, pretty soon we will have technology that you just have to wait. You don't have to carry a laptop or a phone is you know, and put like a chip in your head or something or in your eye. Like Google Glass. I wish Google Glass comes back. They have to fix Google Glass. Google Glass is just to be kind of looks like glasses a little bit. And what it is, it's uh, a little mirror that you look at it and you connect it to your phone, your Android phone. Oh, oh connect to your iOS phone. And you were able to like see stuff. It's pretty cool. But it has a nice camera too. Oh well. Alright, let's uh we have about ten minutes left of this hour of the show. So uh I'm gonna uh start talking and closing up this hour of the show. I'm gonna thank you all for listening to the Nathan Markley show on 88.3 FM WQRI Roger Williams Student Radio here in Bristol, Rhode Island. I'm Nathan Markley, and of course, you can message me on Twitter at Markley So or on Facebook, facebook.com slash the Nathan Markley So. And if you have any questions or comments or want to discuss more about the stuff I talked about during the show of hour one, Feel free to do that on there. Also, the NathanMarkleyShow.com is our website that you can listen to the show after the fact and go back and see what I talk about. Go check out the links in the show notes or say you miss album one of the show, you will be able to listen to it. As always, thank you. And, uh, yeah. That will conclude this portion of the Nathan Michael show.